This episode is supported by CuriosityStream. Head to curiositystream.com slash S-U-I-P-H-N-E to start watching for free today. Ragnar Lothbrok, the legendary Viking king of Denmark and Sweden, hangs in a cage suspended above a pit. His enemies, led by the king of Northumbria, taunt him through the night. He is released into a pit of snakes where he dies alone. As news of his death spreads to Denmark, his sons gather the greatest Viking army yet assembled and sail to war. They arrive on the shores of England, Vitserk, Bjorn Einside, Uber, and Ivar the Boneless, commanding the Great Heathen Army. Iwaran Reitha for a Beshnakumina over Northumbra land, and that folk a Yamlich played on, that war on Ormeta Thodnas and Ligreshas, and Furna Drakan war ye sevena or them lift of Leogende, and laughed at them, Tasilchan Yaris, a Yamlicha Hadran and Mana, her yunk, Adi Legode goddess Chiljan in Lindisfalde, Loch Reavlich and Manslicht. The Danes, who were first Vikings and then conquerors, took over vast swathes of England in the 9th century. This area was known as the Dane Law. The other half of England was Wessex and its tributaries, splitting England in two, although many Danes lived there as well. In the Dane Law, a unique Anglo Danish culture emerged, having a profound influence on the English language and society. Alfred and his successors managed to chip away at the Danish holdings in the coming decades and eventually reconquered England under the House of Wessex, unifying it finally into the Kingdom of the English, or England. But the Viking influence on England was far from over. Ethelred the Unready was so afraid of the Danes that he paid off Viking raiders by reintroducing the Danegeld, making England a renewed target. He then made the monumental mistake by murdering all Danes in England in the St. Brice's Day Massacre. One of these murdered Danes was the sister of the Danish king Swain Folkbeard, who invaded England in 1003. Northern England crowned Swain as their king, which passed on to his son Knut the Great. After Ethelred's death, Knut was crowned king of all England and ruled a vast North Sea empire. Although the House of Wessex returned to power after Hartha Knut died without an heir, and Edward the Confessor was chosen as king. However, Edward was a victim of political intrigue, and upon his death there were three claimants to the throne. Harold Godwinson, the Earl of Wessex, Knut the Great's grandson, Harold of Norway, and William the Bastard of Normandy, who once heard a rumour that Edward had chosen him. The nobles chose Godwinson, and thus war ensued. The War of 1066 began when Harold invaded from Norway, winning the Battle of Fulford, but he was soon defeated by Harold Godwinson in the Battle of Stamford Bridge. Unlucky for Harold, a few days later, William invaded from Normandy and defeated Harold at the Battle of Hastings. William was crowned king and transferred the capital from Winchester to London as it was larger and closer to his home in Normandy. He then invaded the rest of England and became William the Conqueror. This is where England's history gets a bit French, as the House of Normandy was technically a vassal to the Kingdom of France, which caused a rivalry between the two kingdoms that would last until our day. The Normans also introduced the Code of Chivalrie and more modern castles, helping solidify their rule. Robert Cortos also led the first English troops in the First Crusade in the Holy Land. Norman rule ended in civil war between Empress Matilda and her cousin Stephen of Blois, until Henry II inherited the throne, the first in the Angevin dynasty, who also ruled Anjou, Aquitaine and Normandy through inheritance, and Brittany and Ireland through submission. This meant that now more of France was ruled by the English king than the French king, made more confusing when you remember that the Angevins were in fact also French. Their most famous monarch was Richard the Lionheart, known as a wise and brave crusader who probably didn't speak a word of English. When Richard was campaigning in the Holy Land, his brother John rebelled against the crown. This is the foundation of Robin the Hood, a crusader who returned to England and fought against the injustices and tyranny of Prince John. Robin Hood is a disputed character, but was likely based on the sentiment of English peasants who were loyal to King Richard, helping solidify Robin and his band of merry men into English folklore. Around this time, the Red Cross of St. George had been brought back from the Crusaders to form the flag of England. When John became king, he signed the Magna Carta, which stripped the crown of much of its power while continuing costly wars with France. This culminated in a civil war between Prince Louis of France and Henry III, who won the war and installed the Plantagenet dynasty. 
The Plantagenets were Angevins, but had lost the county of Anjou to the King of France during the war, and so could no longer claim the title. The Plantagenets are known for conquering Wales and entering into devastating wars with the Scots, who rebelled against the increasing English interference, and began the Hundred Years' War in France over the English-held Aquitaine. The expulsion of Jews was also commenced in 1290, ostensibly for religious reasons, but more importantly for the crown to inherit Jewish debt to pay for the wars. They also established the Parley with Lords, and other nobles called the Commons, which we now call Parliament. The war with France also brought the Black Death to England, which killed between 30 and 40% of the population. The decrease in population brought many changes to the land, notably labour shortages and the rise of wages, contributing to a rise in the lower middle class. The last Plantagenet king was Richard II, who was deposed by Parliament in support of his cousin, the exiled Duke of Lancaster, Henry. Henry was made king as the first Lancaster dynasty, a cadet branch of the House of Plantagenet. The English had emerged from the High Middle Ages as a new people, a crusading state now expanding their zone of influence beyond their island, to Ireland, France, and the Holy Land. The language they spoke was evolving into Middle English, heavily influenced by Old Norse and Norman French. Then long and folk to go on pilgrimages, and palmers for to sake and stronders stronders, to fair in the hallways, cooth in sundry landers. And specially from every shearer's end of England to Canterbury they wend, the holy blissful martyr for to sake, that him hath hopen when that they were sake. This reading was taken from the 26 minute documentary The History of English over at Curiosity Stream, today's sponsor. Understanding the way English evolved is a fascinating tale, especially since English is now learned as a second language by more people than any other language in history. English is truly the lingua franca of the 19th century until today. You can watch this for free by using your one month trial by heading to curiositystream.com slash suibhne or using the code suibhne when signing up. This will also help support the channel while you learn. Curiosity Stream has over 2,400 documentaries and other non-fiction content available to stream right from your home. Choose anything from their vast library on history, science, or even politics and social issues, and start watching for free today. Thank you everyone for watching, please like and subscribe, and if you'd like to support, you can do so at Patreon. Until next time.